Today I'm going to talk a bit about Pomona, a REST API framework. First, a little bit about myself. My name is Asbjörn Ulsberg. I am a business architect of web API and interfaces at PayX Norway. The backstory of Pomona is that we developed version 2 of a product called Busy Storefront in 2010. That is an e-commerce engine that had a binary API. By 2011, planking was popular, and also by then, maintaining storefront across tens of different customer installations felt a bit like this. Because remember, this was before NuGet. So references had to be handled manually. And tight binary integrations lead to what is known as DLL hell. So we thought, how about creating a web API? Take one of the web API it was based on Open Rasta. Uh, it was back then a mature open source web framework created by Sebastian Lambler. Um, Nancy was still in early alpha back then, and this was also before ASP.NET Web API, so OpenRasta seemed like the perfect choice. But after less than a year, the new Web API felt tedious, and our feelings about the new API went from this to more like this. Let me give you an example. Say we want to expose a customer in the web API. We have a new domain object called customer, and we want to expose it as a customer resource. We do that through mapping. We used AutoMapper, but it was still a lot of manual code and work to do this. To create customers, you need to post to a customer's resource. To do that, you have to have a customer creation form which is mapped to the customer domain object. And if you want to query for customers, you have a query class, a query string parser, a query builder, and the customer that you eventually do the database query on, which is then returned through all the same mappers we have seen already. And if you want to combine all of this, you quickly get into this situation where you have a lot of manual code that you have to maintain. And that of course becomes very boring. So in short, it's a lot of manual labor with mapping and querying, maintaining a lot of classes, files and fluff, and you have no whistle, so there's no free client library you can download. But wait, there's more, because resource design is a hard problem. Relationships are hard to express. All resources need a manually created URI. And you quickly incur performance issues. Each reference needs to be fetched if its data is required by the view being populated in the client application. It's also hard to define the width of a resource. That is how many properties and array items it contains. The depth of a resource is also hard to decide. How much data from descendant or child objects should the resource contain? I'd say that uh, smart resource design depends on smart querying capabilities. And it's impossible to reach a perfect balance between depth, width, and performance. It's also very easy to map yourself to death when you do resource design. It's a lot of manual code to maintain. So let's look at an example. This is a critter resource. It has the name Crimson Cow and a slingshot weapon. Say our client application needs to know which parts this weapon consists of. We have to expand the parts. So here's the depth problem. But say we want to know which other weapons this creator has. It has a knife too. So here's the width problem. 
But if it has more weapons, it may look like this. And it's impossible to know when to stop the expansion. And remember, all of this is hard-coded on the server since we don't have any smart querying capabilities in the client. So we quickly end up with something like this. With too much information, too much code, too much manual mapping, and too much stuff and fluff to maintain. So we sat down and pondered. How about creating a framework to take care of all of this? Create a framework? Really? Well, we thought hard and long about the problem, researched a lot and didn't find anything fitting, so we decided to create Pomona. We wanted the framework to encourage productivity and fruitful development. And since Pomona is the goddess of fruit gardens and trees, and XML and JSON look like trees, and since the framework should encourage productivity and fruitful development, we thought Pomona was a fitting name. Pomona consists of two parts. The client, which does link to query string conversion. It maps resources and form objects. It has deserialization of the stuff returned from the server. And it has mapping to custom objects that you can create on the fly with select statements in the client. The client is automatically generated. You can download it as a NuGet package. And we also have an experimental Ruby implementation just to be sure that the server works with other languages. And the other part of Pomona is the server. It has a query parser that parses custom OData query strings into link expression trees. It does mapping from query objects to domain objects and from form objects used to alter and create resources back to domain objects. And the serializer generates JSON based on the incoming request. So how does this look? Well, we have the client where you perform statically typed link queries. They are then fed through a link provider which is then translated to an OData-like query. The query string is passed onto the server through a query parser. The query parser then converts the query string into a link expression tree again, which is fed to the link provider. And the provider maps the query to the stored database of any kind that support link, and then maps the output data and sends it to a serializer. And serializer creates a JSON that is sent back to the client, deserialized, fed through a mapper, and then returned as a static type or a dynamically created type based on the incoming query. So as you can see, the most important thing here is the query capability. Pomona queries support where, select, group by, order by, take, skip, and expand. So how does this look then if we want to do some queries? You do a where on names equal to Game Boy. And you can see the filter down in the, in the query string matches that of the link query. And that returns an array of console objects to the client. And I look at first, you can see the projection there in the query string. And the return type is then a singular class that is also executed and transformed as a top or limit query in SQL. So it will perform very well. Select looks like this. You can select any property or anonymous type in the client. And you can see the select statement there in the query string. And it's returned as a dynamically created anonymous type, just containing the exact properties you want and not the possible hundreds of properties that the base object you're querying might contain. And expand looks like this. We expand the property type of the game console. The return type looks like this. You then get the console type inline in the return JSON, readily expanded so you don't need to do another get request and that makes the query and the uh, performance very optimal and good. Pomona is, however, work in progress. What we want to do is replace the custom hypermedia and JSON schema implementation with JSON LD and Hydra. 
we have a custom patch implementation that we want to at least extend to also support JSON patch. We want to investigate to maybe support GraphQL, which is Facebook's JavaScript query library. The same with Falcor, which is Netflix JavaScript query library. And we, of course, want to replace our custom OData implementation with OData 4. We're thinking about implementing HTTP2 to pipeline several resources on the expand in the same response. So we don't have to expand them inline in the same JSON, but instead can inline them in the same response. So each response can have its own URI and be cached. We want to create inline self-hosted documentation that's hopefully going to be built on the metadata exposed by Hydra. And while the Pomona server supports eTag, the client only uses that currently for concurrency control. So we want to implement some sort of caching in the client. You can read more about this on pomona.io.